Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be featuring the Mamiya 6 Automat 6x6 folding medium format camera that was kindly sent to me by Sean in Wakefield of England and Sean if you're watching hope you enjoy the video. Now most of you that have been following my channel over the years, you'll know that I like shooting the Zeiss Icon Netar and also the Franca Salida 3, both medium format folding cameras, both 6x6. When I got this one out of the box after Sean sent it to me, I took it out of the box, had a little look at it and straight away I realised there were some differences and I'm going to need to get a little bit used to this camera before I go out and shoot it. For one, it's got a coupled rangefinder in it, where my other two, I have to put a little tiny adapter on the top for a rangefinder and find my own distances and use the um, lens focusing scale to try and get my focus nice and sharp. But this one's got it all included, except it doesn't do anything on the lens. There's no markings on the lens at all. It's quite genius, really, when you look through the viewfinder and try and get your parallaxes together to get your focus. The actual film plane at the back of the camera moves back and forward. Now at first I couldn't figure that out, so I got online to Martin Henson, most of you know Martin Henson's a great YouTuber and he's got these cameras, he's well used to them. And he had to give me the nudge in the right direction because I said I can't find any focus in on the, on, the, on the lens. Martin, I said help me out and he went, yeah, it's on the back mate. And straight away I looked, opened it up and went, oh right, that's pretty genius, Japanese, eh? Brilliant idea. Now these cameras were first introduced around the early 1940s and they went all the way through to the late 1950s. This particular one is the Mamiya 6 Automat. There was another Automat afterwards, although I can't really see what the difference was apart from this little tiny switch at the back, which I believe is to stop you doing double exposures. To be honest with you, I don't know what that little switch does. I've been playing around with it. And it's called the Automat because as you advance the film, it automatically cocks the shutter for you. With my other folding cameras, as I advance the film, looking at the little red window at the back to get my next frame, I then have to cock the shutter manually and take the shot. This one does it all for you. In fact, you don't even have to look through the red window. There's a little tiny number scale on the film advance knob there. And as you turn it, it stops at your next frame, cocks the shutter, you just need to press the button and go. Pretty genius. And for those of you that like doing double exposures, you can manually cock the shutter without advancing the film. The lens is a 75mm lens and it's Olympus D Zuko. I've probably butchered that name, but um, it's Olympus D Zuko, 75mm, and the apertures on it are from f3.5 all the way to f22. And the shutter speeds are 1 500th of a second all the way down to one second and it's also a bold mode as well so this camera got enough for you to play with to be creative and adventurous in your photography while you're shooting it the viewfinder is nice and bright as i look through there it's nice and bright nice and clean the lens is very clean there's no fungus on it at all so you know sean sent me a blinding camera here to play around with and i've also noticed that there's no zone focusing scale on the lens itself it's actually at the top of the camera there. So once you've got your focusing right through the rangefinder, you can just look at this little scale here and it'll give you a zone focusing. And it's pretty easy to understand as well. I've gone through all the shutter speeds and I've kind of roughly listened and counted myself from one second all the way to 500th of a second. The slower shutter speeds seem to be working like clockwork. And uh, I've already gone out and shot a roll of HP5 on this just up and down the road just to make sure there's no light leaks and there isn't prior to that. Also shot a torch through there in the dark, through the lens, and just to see if I could see any, any little pinholes in the bellows. Nothing at all. So this camera's pretty much in mint condition. There's a few little scrapes and marks on the leather, but that's to be expected. This thing's over 60 odd years old. And on the top of the button, I've also got the screw hole there for my cable release to go in. And on the lens itself, you've got your normal flash sink and a couple of settings on the side. So without further ado, let's put a roll of Ilford's HP5 inside the camera. Said to me by Sean, cheers Sean. I go out and shoot it, see what it can do. So loading the film is a little bit strange, a little bit different. When you open the back of the camera, you're presented with this back plate looking thing here. You have to slip that out. Of course, at first I didn't know what that was until I realized that the uh, focusing goes up and down on the film plane. But of course, that's the pressure plate for the film. So I'll leave that out for a second. And there's a little tiny red window as well there. I've got to keep advancing until that little red window pops up, which I believe that means I'm at the start. And then pull this little tab over here that enables me to put the film inside but it floats about there's nothing there's no stopper at the other end it just floats about I have to pull that over but it still floats about pretty strange but um <laughs> and then I've got see these two little tiny whatever they are there I've got to pull the film underneath them that them two strips there 
like so and then put it inside the take up spool right, that's in there and then <laughs> start to wind that through to get it taken up there it goes get it a bit tighter and there's a little tiny dot there I've got to get my arrow lined up with that little dot like so and then put my pressure plate back in if I don't put that back in I'll be screwed but um, I've got to somehow hold this side because when I put the pre pressure plate in it pulls the paper that way God, it's really fiddly Right, that's the <laughs> that's the pressure plate in <laughs> and then the arrows moved away from the dot this is what happened last time uh, let's pull that back get that nice and tight oh what a pain I must admit the Zeiss and the Salida is much easier right they're in the pressure plates in and if you do get one of these make sure it's got the pressure plate because if you haven't got that you'll be screwed for trying to take your pictures okay let's close the back now and that's the little red window I was talking about so now I should be able to find advanced all the way to frame number one and it will say number one when I get there there you go and it's locked itself and I'm on frame number one if I want to skip to the next frame because it's locked if I want to skip to the next frame I can pull that lever over and I can go to frame number two but for whatever reason I'd want to do that I don't know so that's all ready to go the uh, shutter's cocked ready to be fired uh, once I open that and press the button all tickety-boo oh, I thought I'd come down the beach for a change <laughs> it's about six o'clock in the evening so the light's nice and nice and low um, and the sun's over that way and the sea's over that way so just a little bit of simple incident reading and stuff just to get used to this camera and um, should have bought me coat because there's a little bit of parky down here I'm bleeding freezing and to open the camera got a little button here push that out comes the lens it's fantastic just put this in your pocket like all the other folding cameras I've got <laughs> So now all I can need to do is just go to my next shot. I don't even have to look through the red window. Just keep going. Locks. It's already cocked the shutter for me. Just go and shoot. You can see, as I advance, you can see the, um, the shutter being cocked there. Back to position, off we go. I decided to come off the beach. It was getting a bit cold down there. But, um, I've come just over across the beach, really, uh, to this place here. Some nice reefs and a nice lake. Some swans over there, but I'm not interested in those. Just want to get some shots of these reefs. There uh, she comes. Hey. Michael! It's my brother-in-law. What are you doing? A slow run? A slow run, yeah. You're mental. My brother-in-law, he thinks he's rocky. So all my shots are done, 
All I need to do is wind the film back, just keep winding. Open the back window there so I can see it. Hmm. It's got a bit stiff, I'll have to open it in the dark room. I'm not going to pull it, it's got stiff. I don't know why. I'll have a look in the dark room, see what it, what's going on. Right, let's get in the car, I'm freezing. I've just literally pulled up in the car, gone straight into my dark room. There's my developing tank and reel. Um, but I need to close that door so I can see why that's all gone stiff. At least in the dark, I can open the back and uh, no, no fear of exposing the film to light. So let's close the door. Now, for some reason, the, um, the film was quite tight on the pressure plate. I don't know why. I loaded it correctly. Um, never mind. So although you saw some of the scans in the video, I brought the negatives into the dark room. There was a couple that I liked and one in particular was the stairs. It's always sometimes, you know, the afterthought when you're taking photographs on location somewhere, you just see something, you take a picture and you think, oh, I'll just take another shot of that and then walk away. But when you see the negative or get in the dark room or scan, you actually think that ah, in a bad photograph. So this particular negative of the stairs with the sand that had drifted up in the wind, I quite liked. So I made a print of it. I just like the way the sand rested on the stairs and it's probably why I saw it at the, at the time and took the photograph but the print has come out really nice it's still sitting up there hanging to dry and uh, as bad as a tone in there and detail and also very sharp as well so Sean if you're watching thanks a lot for the camera I'm gonna send you that print as a little thank you from me and the other negative that I did really like was uh, one of the groin in the reflection of the water but unfortunately I just had a little bit of trouble with the negative throughout the development but it's still a nice photograph and I made a print of it anyway and with this particular print I just burned in the sky a little bit just burned in the sand at the bottom and did a little tiny bit of dodging on the water just to make the uh, the print pop and it came out nice other than the little tiny streaks that I've got coming up um, which was on the negative so I'm not quite sure what happened there but hey oh, it's all living and learning isn't it and as for the Mamiya 6 it's fantastic I really did enjoy shooting it. I found the focusing really easy with that back plane going forward, just the coupled rangefinder looking through, and I noticed that the lens is very sharp indeed from the scans and also the prints. So that's the second time that I've shot it, and I'm looking forward to shooting this camera more in the future. Uh, for now though, I'm going to put it side by side with my Zeiss Icon and my Franca Salida. Until the next time, I want to go out and shoot a folding camera. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments if you've got one of these cameras. Uh, also let us know what that little switch does as well, if you know what it does, because I ain't got a clue. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.